Welcome to Git and GitHub, a online lecture for the Programming for Cultural Heritage class at the Pratt Information School. Today we're going to be talking about Git and GitHub specifically. We're going to look at using Git, um, using it on the command line, and then also looking at using GitHub's tools, including their graphical user interface. Uh, to start with, Git is basically software right, that you install on your computer that helps you keep track of changes to your source code over time. So when you have a bunch of source code together, you can call this a repository. And what Git does is that it helps you keep tra track of the changes to that repository as you edit files, manipulate files, add new files, delete files. So it's a way of version tracking software. And it works at the line level, so even you change one line of code in a file, it knows about it and it can keep track of it. So this is a really great tool to enable collaboration um, because you can you know, send files to each other and know the changes that were made in between them. And it's also a really a great tool to um, just keep track of your own changes to your own files over, over time and, um, ch and help kind of back them up and, and know what was changed over um, your project. Uh, to kind of get an idea of what this looks like, uh, here's two different visualizations that are um, demonstrating a, a bunch of collaborators interacting with a GitHub uh, repo. So the first one is a um, visualization of the Linux kernel being modified. So Linux is an operating system and the kernel is a kind of the core of the system. So there's a lot of kind of basic functionality there. And so you can see in this visualization, there's each one of these nodes is a um, file or directory being modified. And all these individuals are, you know, contributing to the, the repository and modifying each file um, over time. And so each one of these kind of edits is keep is, you know, tracked and, and uh, controlled in the Git repository. Uh, the other example is um, one where they're not using source code at all. They're using uh, XML files. So in this, the Shelley Goodwin archive, they have a uh, collection of XML TEI files, which is basically a very verbose markup language of uh, uh, text files. So you know, keeping track of things like proper nouns, adjectives, etc. And so in this example, they're not modifying code. They're modifying the edits to their XML. So you can use um, Git on any sort of collection of files that you want to keep track of, changes to at the line by line level. Um, you know, usually that would be source code, but in this case, you know, they're doing it with a, a structured markup language like XML. There are other versions of um, the same idea of version control for software for, for source code. Uh, of the two popular ones that um, are not Git are Subversion and Mercurial. Subversion was popular before Git kind of um, got larger, and it basically works on the notion of checking in and out files, um, while Mercurial is an, an, another kind of version control, and it's uh, not as popular. For the most part, Git, uh, and specifically GitHub, are um, the major uh, version control systems uh, that you would encounter today, uh, but there are other ones to be aware of. The main workflow that we're going to be using is basically uh, at a high level initializing a, a Git project or a Git uh, repository, making changes within that Git repository, like adding new files, deleting files, modifying files, and then once you have done that, you can push these changes up to a remote repository or pull them down to uh, your local repository. So the way Git works is that it's basically a directory structure. So everything inside one directory is basically the Git repository, and it keeps track of everything that's going on inside there. So you make a change to a file, it records that change in the little Git database that lives in that directory, and it keeps track of everything that goes on in that directory. So you can kind of think of this as your local repository that exists on your local computer. And so that's useful because you can commit changes to your to your source code, and those become kind of like snapshots of where your project was at a certain time. And so since you have a snapshot, you can move back and forth between those snapshots if you need to, 
restore old versions of it, restore or old versions of the whole thing, or specific files that you want to restore. Um, so that's useful to have it locally. What you can do though then is you can also push this local changes to a remote repository. So basically a remote repository is another computer somewhere running Git. In this case we're going to be using GitHub. So GitHub you can kind of think of as just another computer on the internet running the Git software that knows how to interact with the, these commands. And so you can push these changes from your local repository to the remote one, so to GitHub, and then you can also pull changes back that were made from there. So you can imagine you made some changes, pushed the file to GitHub, someone else pulled those files down, changed them, pushed them back up to GitHub, and then you can pull their changes down. And since Git works on a line-by-line -line level, it's fairly good at kind of combining changes together um, and keeping everything in track. This little diagram here shows the same kind of idea in the same workflow. And the important thing to remember is that there's this local repository, right, that you initialize on your own computer. And this is your local repository. You can make changes there, add stuff, remove stuff, make all sorts of modifications, and then you commit those into a snapshot, right? And then that snapshot can be pushed up to this remote repository. And likewise, those remote snapshots can be pulled back down and then your local repository figures out how to merge all the changes together. So there's a lot, uh, a large um, remote repository running Git is GitHub. And so this is a commercial um, product, of course, it's run by Microsoft now. Um, but it's basically just a remote repository you can think of as a Git remote re repository. There's others, like Bitbucket is another commercial product that you can use as a remote repository and you could even run your own if you wanted to. You could set up your own Git remote repository and uh, using GitLab and, and host it yourself. Um, what's nice about GitHub is that it ties in these account permission features so you can you know do collaboration a lot easier, you can have private code, you can share stuff around a lot easier um, and it also um, offers kind of like a, a GUI interface to Git because traditionally Git has been a, a command line tool that you interact with just by sending commands via the, the, the terminal or command line. So we're going to get started. So if you don't yet have a GitHub account, you want to have, head over to github.com and sign up. Um, and also, you want to download their tool, desktop.github.com, um, from that address to install their software that uh, installs a GUI interface, but also to install any Git software you need to run on the command line as well. So sign up for account first, and then download this tool, and then we'll continue from there. So now that we have the tools installed, um, we're going to start thinking about what's sort of the workflow that we want to follow for initial, um, initializing Git, a Git repo and, and using it in our project. So a kind of a realistic workflow that's a very simple way to get started with this is starting from GitHub first and then going from the remote repository to your local repository. Um, so this doing it this way just ensures that you have the remote repository set up first and then you can just clone it locally and start working with it locally and uh, communicating with the remote repository when you need to. So I think this is a, a very simple easy way to get started with Git. So the first thing that we're going to do is go to GitHub, we're going to initialize a repository on the remote server, then we're going to clone that uh, repository to our local computer, start making changes, doing uh, various inter stuff with the files, and then pushing it back up to GitHub. And so you can do this on the command line, and then we're also going to look at later using the, uh, the GitHub desktop GUI interface that's installed uh, if you don't want to use the command line. So the first thing that we want to do is head over to GitHub and sign in to our account that we created. Make sure you're signed in. Um, and as I said, the first thing we want to do is make a new repository. So you can just do this through the website, the interface. Um, you just create a new repository. You have to give it a name. Um, so we'll call it something like um, PFCH uh, test repo or something like that. Uh, we'll give it a title, and so you can choose between a public or private repository. So public, we're going to be using public because we want to share this code. Um, but for say, for example, you had a private repo where you only wanted certain people to see, like you just have a small team, you can make the code private and Git and GitHub would restrict who could actually see the code on the site. 
Um, so we're going to stick with public though. You can initialize uh, the repository with a readme. This is basically just like a little um, help file that is uh, in your main directory that just tells people about your repository and how to interact with it. Um, and then you can also uh, add a git ignore file. And so this git ignore is basically a, a predefined set of files that um, allow you to either uh, ignore certain files in the directory or um, ignore specific types of files. So for example, if you had a big CSV uh, data set in your repo that you wanted to not include in Git, right? So say you had your big data file in your repo or in your directory, you could add that um, file to your git ignore and so it would prevent that file from being added to the rep repository and being committed to git and eventually github. So it's a way to kind of um, exclude files from your uh, repository that don't need to be there. It's also a nice way to kind of you know, uh, exclude things like passwords or API keys that you want don't want to get put into your um, github public github rep repository of the code. And you can also um, pick a license if you want to. It's always nice to define a license before um, for other people to use to know how to interact with your, your code. So once that's created we have um, basically initialized a repository on the remote server that's available to us and the next thing we need to do is get this remote repository locally um, and here's that readme dot, um, file that exists uh, now in the, in, in the remote repository. So to get that uh, remote repository cloned to our local repository, we just need the address of this remote repository. And if we click on this clone or download button, we can see that this is the URL and it ends in .git. And this is basically just the address of our uh, repository on GitHub. So if we just copy that, um, we can go over to our uh, a new terminal window and we can start interacting with Git locally. Right. So Git is just software installed on our computer. It's like every other kind of software command line things you can use. And so if you type Git, you can see how to use it. It has various actions like clone and int and other sorts of things. Um, but basically you just, you know, you need to know the commands you need to do to do certain actions um, to interact with uh, uh, Git. So I'm going to move on to um, my desktop because I was in my user folder right now and I'm just going to keep all my code on my desktop. I'm going to work from there uh, and, I wanna, and I have this repository there. So basically you can say git clone, and clone is the action, and then the address of the repository you want to clone. And so by doing this, um, git says okay and it talks to this remote git repository which is github and it pulls down the code that's up there, that repository. So now if you look in the same directory where you cloned that repository, you'd see that the PFCH test, 2020 test now exists there. And there's that readme file that you know was initialized for us in the repo. Um, so now that this file is here, we can um, also see that this, by initializing this git repo, has created this little git directory. So dot means current directory, dot dot means previous directory, and any file or directory that has a period or a dot before it is usually kind of hidden from the file system because it's kind of like a system file. And so if we look inside this git file, it's actually a folder full of information. And so this whole folder is basically the little git database that keeps track of all the stuff like the changes to files, the history of files, you know, all sorts of log stuff. It's basically like a little database running inside of this repository. And so it's also important to remember that this information is, is contained to just that one directory, right? Just the PFCH 2020. And so everything that happens in that directory is, is tracked by Git and stored in this little database. So the first thing we can do is um, make a new file, right? So say, for example, we are going to um, add a new file to our project. I'm just going to use my editor Sublime to create a new file called test.py. I'm going to open it here, and then I'm just going to add some you know, simple command print statements to it and save it. So if we go back and to our um, command line uh, terminal and type in git status, we'll see that it's saying, oh, there's a new file in this directory that uh, wasn't here before. And it's saying it's untracked because you haven't 
ask Git to track it, but it's aware of that there's a new file in the directory, um, and it's it's there currently. So what you can do is ask it to begin tracking this file, and that basically means I want you to add this file to your your list of files that you're going to keep tracking of, and you're actually going to look at line by line inside of that file what changes between each um, update to the file. And so by by adding it to um, Git, you type Git add and then the name of the file. It will add that file to its tracking list, and you can see the status of it. And so it says, okay, this file is. Um, ready to be committed to a snapshot and it's it's available in my list of things I'm tracking. So if you were to go back though and modify that file once it's been added, so we'll just add another print statement here and save and do another status, we'll see that oh it knows it's been changed now, right? So because it's been added it's it's tracking the changes and it sees okay there's been a change to this file. And so what you want to do if you wanted to add this change to get uh, again, you'd have to say git add and the name of the file again, and you see, okay, if you just check the status again, it'd see that it's it's green and it's been up to date, right? So let's try to um, make another change here. and we'll create a new file. So we have a modified file and we're editing a new file. And We'll just change this file to have a, a simple print statement. And let's see the git status again. So right, so now it's saying, okay, there's a modified file and there is a new file that's untracked. And what you can do is add a shortcut by saying git add period. And period basically means add everything in the directory to the git. So you can add every change that you've done to the to the file to the directory to any files in the directory by just saying git add start dot uh, git add period right. And so what you could also do if you didn't want to necessarily add everything that's in the directory, you could do something like git add um, star dot py right. And that would say only add the uh, Python files in this directory. So the, the thing that we need to keep in mind here is that whenever we make changes uh, and we're satisfied and save those changes, we want to add, make sure Git knows about those changes by adding them to the, um, the, the, to the, the Git repo by saying add and then the file you want to add. So once we are satisfied with the files that we've added to this repo, we need to kind of commit them to a snapshot. So we type git commit dash m and the m just means message and in this in the parentheses or sorry the quotations you just say the message. So in this example I'm going to say first commit you know new files or something like that. So once I've committed these files they've been added to the to the repository as like a snapshot right. It's taking a snapshot of these files and then you can see that the, there's nothing to do in the directory. It's kind of a clean working directory. Um, so once these have been added, you can also do sorts of things like push them to remote repositories. So if I just type git push, then it says, okay, I've pushed it up to this remote uh, repository, which is our GitHub. And if we go over and look at it, we can see that it's been pushed and now it's available there for us. So the next thing we can uh, try to simulate here is doing a git pull. So if we were on the um, GitHub site, we could actually um, edit one of these files via the site. And this would be kind of like simulating if someone else, uh, a collaborator, collaborator, was editing a file locally and pushed it up to the repository. Right. So in this case, we're just going to use the website editor to, to kind of like pretend somebody's doing that. And so if we add another um, a print statement to this file and commit it to the repo, now there's a change on the remote repo, right? So up on GitHub in the remote repository, there's a difference. And so what we can do is by using um, Git is that we can pull down that change from the remote repository and automatically merge it into our, our repo. So we can just say um, uh, git status is clean, and then we can say um, git pull. So we'll type out git pull and it will reach out to the remote, local, uh, the remote repository and pull down uh, the changes. And so it just says, okay, this one file, testpy, has four changes, you know, three additions and one minus. And so um, 
GitHub kind of provides a nice visual interface. You can click through and see those changes uh, visually. And so if we look at that last commit that was done, we can see that you know here are the the, the one line that was changed, and then the three additions um, in the file, in that specific file. The next thing we'd want to look at is being able to uh, reverse something that you do. So say for example you um, made a change to a file or you removed a file completely and you wanted to restore it from backup. So if you had a committed version of this already in, in the repository, um, say for example this test py, I deleted it, right? And so this is gone completely from the computer, it's not in the trash bin, it's just completely wiped away because um, that's what happens when you use the rm command. Um, but say you wanted to restore this. What you could do is you could check out a file from your repository and so basically if you type um, this command it will go back to your repo and pull out the the last snapshot of that, that of that file that it has so you say git checkout and then you tell it what um, where you want to pull out from so in our case it's the main master branch and then you say what file you want to use and you say uh, for our case it's test py and then it basically just restores it for us, right? It just pulls it back out of the Git history and, and puts it there for us. And it's restored completely to, to how it was before. So that's one example of what's useful for having these files locally um, in a Git repository and also you know, remotely in case you lost your local repository. Um, and you can also, um, as I mentioned before, work with the git ignore file. So for example, if we wanted to um, have our data files in the same directory, so say we were working with like you know a, a three terabyte or three gigabyte um, CSV file, right? We don't want to add that to GitHub. So what we could do is modify our um, Git um, ignore file to, to exclude that. So I'm just going to create a, 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 a demo file here called really big data CSV. And that's just going to be kind of like, imagine that was a huge CSV file that we don't want to add to our repository. So what we could do is, um, it sees it's there, right? If we do git status, it is aware of the file. So what we want to do is tell git to ignore this big file. So what we can do is we can uh, edit the git ignore file. So it's just a period, uh, git ignore. Uh, the period hides it from the system, but it's still a file. And so if we edit this, it's just a text file we can add a, a pattern or a specific file names that we want the git to ignore. We could even just put .csv and so in that case it would ignore all CSVs in the re repository. So if we did a new git status it would see um, it, it wouldn't see the really big data CSV file anymore but it would see this git ignore that we just recently added. So then if we do git add and git status um, so add everything in the directory and do status it only added that git ignore right it totally totally ignored the, the CSV file in the directory. So using git ignore is a good way to, to have some fine grained control over what's added to your repository and what's not, uh, what isn't. The last two features of Git and GitHub I want to talk about are branches and forks. And so this is not particularly important for the work we'll be doing. It's just kind of a, to be aware that they exist and we'll give a little demonstration of, of what they are. But really for what we've learned up to this point so far, um, as far as creating a repo, you know, uh, adding files, committing files, and pushing and pulling, that's all we re re really need in, in our work. But just to be aware, there's these, this concept of branches and forks in, in, Git, in GitHub. And so branches are basically concurrent versions of files in the same repository. You can think of it as a literal branch off a tree, right? So if you have files, um, you know, the trunk is the main repo and you want to branch off some files and work on them separately, you can do this. This is really nice if you are doing uh, collaborative working with somebody like a team and you say, for example, you are working on a, a website together and you wanted to, you know, your task was to work on the headers, a header uh, of the website for uh, a week, right? And so you don't want to be changing the, the master branch with all the information in there um, as you're doing your testing and stuff because maybe that's kind of like the production code. So what you can do is you can make a branch and you can work on this code separately, independently from the main re main branch of the repo. And once you're satisfied with it, you can um, merge it back into the main branch and, and all your changes will be automatically um, merged into there, hopefully. So I can give an example of this. So say we were um, 
working on this file here and I wanted to create a new branch you know we'll, we'll stay with that metaphor or something about a header right so you can say git checkout um, hyphen b new header work or something like that and what that does oh you need to make sure that there's uh, no spaces in the name here so what that will do is create a new uh, branch and we can see what branch we are by saying git branch And we can see that there's two branches here, the master branch and then the, the new header work branch that we just created. And so now that we're in this new header branch, we can um, uh, push our, our changes up to the remote repository. And here it's saying it doesn't have that branch yet, so you have to give this, this command to say, okay, create this new branch on the remote repository um, by using this command. And so that will create a new um, branch on the remote repository. And so you could have, head over there to the GitHub site and see it in action. So you can see it's here. Um, and what you could do is um, make a new file, for example. In this case, we'll call it test3 and add it to our repo and push it up to um, the remote repo or on GitHub. And so it's created and pushed it. And if you push it, it's not going to the main branch anymore. It's going to this new sub branch. And so you can see that it is only on the sub branch, the, the new header work branch. If you go back to the main branch, it's not there. So this is very useful for working on files concurrently with others. Um, it's a good, it's a very useful feature for um, collaboration. And so of course once you are done with your work you'd want to merge that change back into the, the main branch and so you can do this via the interface. Um, GitHub makes it very easily done through the interface by doing a, a pull request it's called. And so by using this website you can uh, make a pull request and it generates a, um, it checks to see if it can do it um, so there's no conflicts. You just generate this pull request and you can submit it and approve it. And now if we go back and look that the files that were on the, the new branch we created are now in the main branch as well. All right, so uh, we probably won't use branches in your work, but it's, it's good to be aware of that they exist and, and why you would want to use them. The other thing we'd want to talk about quickly is forks. And so forks are basically a GitHub thing where it's basically copying the entire repo someone else's repo and making it yours. So you're basically, it's not cloning a repo because when you clone you're still connected to the ownership of the previous uh, who owns that repo. When you fork you're basically making a copy of it and now you own that repo and it belongs to you. And so what you can do with that, um, for example, uh, this is just an example of what you can do is I was working on some Omega plugin a long time ago, like seven years ago, and I was done working on it so uh, I wasn't updating it. But someone came along and forked it so they forked it and it became theirs right and because it was theirs they could do whatever they want with it and they continue working on it for years you know improving it and publishing it and, and it was the new kind of uh, uh, repo that just you know they were working on without relation to my original one but what's nice about forking something is that it still is connected uh, kind of a little bit to your original one it knows where it came from so you could theoretically create another pull request where you're going to merge in um, this new one back into your original uh, repo that was forked from so it's a still it's a, a nice way to still collaborate without having to be working in the same repository and finally I wanted to look at using the um, github GUI interface. So this is basically just a, a user interface, a graphical user interface over top of Git, and it's specifically tailored to GitHub. 
And so with it, you can do pretty much the same stuff you can do on the command line, but it's a, a, a visual interface um, through clicking instead of you know commands. So we're going to create a new repository here. We'll just do the same kind of thing we were doing before. We'll give it a name. Um, we'll add a description. Um, you can pick up the path that you want it to be, right? In our example, we were cloning before, but in this example, you're 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 making it somewhere on your hard drive using this um, create new repository. So you want to put it where you want your code to be. So I was working on my desktop. That's where I was working before. So I'm going to make sure it changes the desktop. Um, we want to start up with a, a repository or with a readme file, and then you can do the same sort of thing with the git ignore and the license. So we create that. So now this is the interface showing us that this is the 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 repo. There's nothing in there yet, right? And so what we can do is go back and um, create a new file, right? So if I'm in my Sublime, I can go back and create a new file and save it in that directory that we just initialized as a, a repo. So it's on our desktop and we called it test2. So if we save this file there, go back to the GUI interface we can see oh it's saying oh there's a new file here and there's some changes to it right and so this is a little bit different from the command line where you don't have to add each one it just is adding them automatically it knows there's changes and it's automatically listing them there so the only thing you need to do is commit this to the snapshot that you want to create so the same as there in the command line there's a dash m you just this is the interfaces dash m I just wrote first commit, and now it's added to the history of commits or the history of snapshots, right? And so since this is a brand new local repository, we can publish it up to GitHub. And that's what's nice about this um, interface. Oh, I don't want a private code, I want public code. What's nice about this interface is that it is um, automatically hooked up to GitHub, so it just you know it knows where to push it and what user account and all that. So now we have a clean local directory, and if we went to GitHub, we could um, see this repository has been pushed up there. Mm -hmm. So there it is. And so of course, um, similar to the command line, you know, if we came in here and modified this file, added, added some new changes to it, went back to the tool, we'd see that it is now listed as the files that have been changed. And you can go in and add a new commit message, you know, push this into the, another commit, commit it to your branch, and instead of publishing it, now you can, this is basically git push, and you're pushing it back up to the uh, remote repository on GitHub. So this GUI interface is, you know, it's another way of interacting with Git if you don't want to use a command line. Um, they're pretty equivalent. Uh, you can do a little bit more detailed stuff with the, the command line version, though. So that's it for the demo. Um, if you want some more information around Git, you can check out this tutorial that um, GitHub has put up. It has some nice uh, interactive tutorial bits to learn Git. You know, Git's, Git has a huge amount of commands, um, but if we just stick with the basic ones we learned today, we can kind of get accomplished what we want uh, done. Um, but if you want to take a look at what else is you can do with Git, there's you know lots of information to learn. So I think that wraps it up for learning about Git and GitHub. So until next time, I'll talk to you later. Bye.